Logging operations depend on a human chain of skilled specialists working together to harvest and prepare timber. By the application of their skills and due consideration to working smart and working safe, these professionals move substantial amounts of timber each day. The last links in this chain are the loader operator and the logging truck driver. They're the team that gets the wood on the road. In order to maintain safe conditions, each of them must prepare and maintain safe conditions in their parts of the loading operation. For maximum safety, however, the loader operator and driver also have to work as a team to reduce hazards. The purpose of this video is to help loader operators and drivers in maximizing safe working conditions during loading and hauling. The first part of the video will briefly review the safety equipment and safe procedures recommended for both drivers and loader operators. Next, we'll look at loading from both the loader operator's point of view and that of the driver. The final section of the tape will discuss safety during hauling. In order to enhance safety conditions during loading and hauling, including deadheading, it's important to start right, and that means safe, well-maintained equipment. Most of the aspects of keeping a logging truck in safe operating condition are routine, simple common sense. But it is precisely because they are so simple and routine that it can become all too easy to overlook them. The routine for your equipment begins with regular maintenance and inspection according to the guidelines established by the state, your company, and the vehicle manufacturer. No matter how recent your most recent inspection may have been, it's important for you as a driver to give your rig the once over before each trip. Pay special attention to air and hydraulic lines. Check for and correct any leaks which may have developed since your last load. You'll need to have an approved hard hat and a good pair of boots for your work in the woods. And one more thing. Regulations forbid riders on logging trucks. That means no unauthorized personnel inside or outside the cab. There's only one seat on a log loader, too. And the loader operator's own seat fills that one. The rules for safe operation intend to keep it that way by forbidding the practice of using the grapple to give rides to logging personnel. Remember, if it eats, breathes, drinks, and cusses, you've got no business taking hold of it with the grapple. Like the driver, the loader operator has to be sure his machine gets the maintenance required to support safe operation. He should remember to check the lines if he's running a cable machine and the hoses of an hydraulic unit. Additionally, the loader operator should always beware of slick machine decks when moving on the loader. The loader operator will need to have a hard hat handy. He'll also need to wear gloves, good work boots, and eye and ear protection in the daily course of his job. Winter brings special considerations to all aspects of logging, including loading and hauling. Of course, you drivers know about the need for carrying enough iron to get out of the woods with a big load. But loader operators also have to take proper precautions in order to give their machines enough bite to hold their ground when operating. This means chains for your loader, too, if yours has rubber mounts, or ice cleats for track machines. It would be foolish for anyone to take all these precautions in terms of equipment only to come up short in terms of the human factor. As with most aspects of safe operation and logging, good communication is the key to safety. During the loading process, you will be using both CB and visual signals to communicate with the driver and any other personnel who might be present. Therefore, you'll have to keep both your eyes and ears open in order to complete the loadout in the safest manner possible. On hot landings, the loader operator has to be especially careful of working sawyers. You and the sawyers should establish a safety zone to which the sawyers can go in order to get out of your way. It's your responsibility as a loader operator to make certain that the sawyers are in those safety zones 
before you begin the load. As you're working, many special situations will arise which present their own particular safety concerns. It is vital that you communicate with other members of the crew about these situations and that you stay aware so that they can alert you to any special problems that they notice. Keeping in mind all aspects of safety mentioned to this point, let's look at the anatomy of a loadout and see how to continually apply the principles of safe preparation and practice. Let's start by examining the operation from the loader operator's point of view. You'll have some work to do in order to get ready for the driver and his rig. Most important is preparing a truck turnaround, preferably something smaller than 40 acres in size, but adequate for the drivers to get into position for you to load them up. You'll have to clear all hazards, including danger trees and brush, as part of preparing the turnaround and loading site. The loader operator should size up the deck and position the loader appropriately for safety and ease of operation. Remember, all accessible areas within the swing radius of the rear or sides of the rotating parts of a yarder or loader must be barricaded in such a manner as to prevent an employee from being struck or crushed by that yarder or loader. On hot landings, you'll also have to consider the Sawyer's work patterns and safety zones when positioning the loader. Once the loader is in position, you'll need to wait for the driver to position the trailer and himself before beginning to set logs in the trailer. The driver should detach the trailer from the cab once it's under the loader and go around to the front of the truck, in front of the bang board. He'll stay there until you signal him to come out. When you're ready to load logs, the first thing to remember is to always choose sound bunk logs in order to provide a firm foundation for the rest of the load. You will also need to choose bunk and stake logs that are long enough to stay secure on both bunks if slippage occurs during transit. As you load, watch for movement of logs in the deck and take the appropriate steps to protect your machine, yourself, and the driver. One term which has come into use in the logging industry is zero energy position. It involves ensuring that logs are in a stable, rested position. The loader operator has the responsibility to see to it that logs reach a zero energy position when loading, sorting, and decking above the road. Not only does a loader operator need to know how to put logs in a zero energy position, he needs to know how to make certain they'll stay in that position during loading. It may seem too obvious to mention, but a log moving in the grapple is not in a zero energy position. Every loader operator should know better than to swing a log over anyone's head. He or she should also know that it's bad practice to chuck cull over the hillside if there's any chance that workers might be present. As you come across any shorties while sorting, you'll need to plan on double-ending them well down in the load, not on the face. Remember to use only singles on top for safe wrapping, transport, and unloading at the mill. As you work, the driver will be watching the truck's built-in scale. Be ready for him to signal you when the truck is full. In turn, he'll be watching and listening for you to signal him to work on a log or to add stake extensions. Remember to be certain all logs are in a zero energy position before signaling the driver to come forward. You should also communicate warnings to the driver concerning any potential rollers in the load. Be prepared to take such appropriate precautions as sigh washing to enhance load stability during wrapping or any other work being carried out by the driver. It is the wrapping process which is the chief focus of the driver's participation in loading. The driver will be waiting in front of the truck's bang board, watching the scale as the load goes in. As a driver, you need to remember to come out only when signaled by the loader operator. As you prepare to limb, set in extensions or wrap, you should always use extreme caution 
when working around the truck frame. When wrapping, safe procedure calls for the use of at least two wrappers, but don't hesitate to use more in the case of such special situations as double-ended shorties in the load. Wrappers should, with appropriate concern for all personnel, be thrown over the load or lifted over by the loader. Never get up on the load carrying a wrapper. Do attach all wrappers and binders before using the cheaters to tighten the wrappers down. Don't pull bunk and compensator pins until the load is wrapped tight. You should also be sure that the loader is shut down and the operator is aware of your intent before pulling those pins. Now the driver begins the actual hauling operation. You should trim limbs from the load before entering the main haul road and remove any rocks lodged between dual tires. These steps will greatly reduce incidental hazards to you and other rigs on the road. As always, to protect yourself in case of an accident, all occupants of any vehicle should wear safety belts. Slick conditions occur frequently during the logging season. Remember to put your chains on in advance of the loadout. As you haul during slick conditions, remember to use lower gears and a balanced combination of all slowing systems. By doing so, you'll maintain a safe, controllable speed without overtaxing and potentially disabling any one slowing system. Communication is important when hauling too, so use your CB and communicate mile marker information to your fellow drivers. Keep in mind though that the purpose of your CB and location information is to be safe, not to compensate for speeding or any other form of recklessness on the road. Further, you should always assume that there are rigs on the road without CBs who can't hear your location. Be prepared to meet these rigs at any time, but not head on. By following safe procedures, you'll eventually reach the public highway where the need for playing it safe becomes even more important. Drive at a controllable speed and drive extra defensively. Logging trucks take just a bit more time and distance to stop than passenger cars. The etiquette of the road gives the right of way to loaded rigs, so be prepared to give it to them if you're deadheading. And be sure to pull far enough out of the way for safe passing. Finally, don't let fatigue catch up with you. Pulling over for a 10 minute nap can make the difference between reaching the mill safely and waking up in the river, if you wake up. This video has demonstrated safe procedures for drivers and loader operators in the logging industry. We've seen the importance of maintenance for both trucks and loaders, as well as the proper equipment for both the driver and the loader operator. The loader operator has seen the importance of properly preparing the area and positioning his machine for loading. We've looked at safe procedures for the loader operator, driver, and other personnel during loading. The driver has been able to see from this video how to take precautions for his own safety and that of others during the loading and wrapping process and how to safely navigate his load to its destination. All these safety procedures have two common elements. The first is establishing safety zones and being in them. This principle applies to the Sawyers and their safety zones the driver in front of the bang board, and the loader operator in the cab of his machine. It also applies to the logs themselves, since the zero energy position represents the safest place for them to be. The second common element is communication. It has been said that knowledge is power, but it is through communication that knowledge is shared. Be active and assertive in communicating with your buddies during each step of the loading and hauling process. You'll be helping them and yourself have a safe, productive day each workday.